I am Air Force retired Colonel Dave Brock. And I am Air Force retired Colonel Harry Matthews. My wild weasel number was 420. My weasel number was 417. Perfect. I was born in 1933. And I was born in 1930. My hometown of origin is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm still a Stiller fan. And I live now in Silver Spring, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C. And my home was uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I went to the University of Oklahoma, so I'm a Sooner born, Sooner bred. And I currently live in Fredericksburg, Texas. I had no military background at all in my family. Uh, I was in Air Force ROTC at the University of Pittsburgh. So I joined the Air Force upon graduation uh, from the University of Pittsburgh in 1955. And I was uh, on the verge of being drafted. And I uh, remembered a friend of mine had joined the uh, Air Force as an aviation cadet. And so I uh, thought that would be the better way to go. So I went in to the recruiting office and said, I want to be an aviation cadet in the Air Force. Perfect. And my background, and my, n n nobody in my family that I know of was ever in the military. I joined, go ahead. Well, let's see, I joined in 1952, Jan January 31st, 1952. I was commissioned in September, I don't remember the date, 1955. The Weasel came after other tours. My early tours in uh, the Air Force were in doing electronic reconnaissance in Europe. My first assignment was to go to an organization in Wiesbaden, Germany, in which I flew special missions along the East German border, up the Berlin Corridor. In fact, there's an article in the Air Force Association magazine about the Berlin for lunch bunch, in which we did a lot of reconnaissance. So all of my work before getting into the weasels was involved with electronic intelligence related to the surface-to-air missile systems. I had several projects in which I, as a lieutenant and captain in the Air Force, uh, were responsible for getting uh, the measurements, antenna patterns and power measurements of uh, the Soviet radars. In fact, in between two reconnaissance tours, I was involved with building the first simulated air defense system up at Rome Air Force Base, or Griffiths Air Force Base up in Rome, New York. This was the first, it's called the SADS-1, simulated air defense system, in which we used down at Eglin Air Force Base eventually to train wild weasel crews and upon finishing that second tour with the reconnaissance outfit in 1967 I had a choice of going to EV-66s or to the wild weasel and I found out that the wild weasel was a much more interesting and challenging mission so I opted for the wild weasel and went through the wild weasel school in the fall of 1967. And I, uh, I was a uh, instructor in the F-105 at McConnell Air Force Base, Wichita, Kansas, and I received orders to go to the Weasel School. And somebody asked me if I volunteered to do that. I said no, but uh, the Air Force uh, selected uh, me to go, so I uh, reported to the same uh, Weasel class that uh, Dave. Uh, was in, and that's uh, in the fall of 1967. I, he was the pilot. Well, I was a pilot. Uh, Matthews was a pilot, and, and uh, Dave was the uh, EWO. Uh, I was the EWO, and we made it an interesting team because, uh, and I've told some people while we were here, he had over somewhere in the vicinity of 2,000 hours in the F-105. And I had somewhere in the vicinity of 4,000 hours doing electronic reconnaissance against the surface-to-air missile systems. So I felt, that, and I think we both felt, that that was a great combination for a weasel crew with that kind of a background on the surface-to-air missile systems and the airplane. Well, we, while we were there, and uh, just prior to us graduating from the weasel school, uh, 
the uh, uh, the Pueblo incident occurred, and we were involved in, in, in that endeavor. Our whole class was shipped to uh, Osan, uh, South Korea, and Dave and I were, were picked to, to fly uh, the F-105 over, which uh, were the only students that, that were uh, picked to do that. And I think the reason, one of the reasons, was that uh, the commander of the uh, of the, of the fighter weapons school uh, selected us because I knew him from our previous uh, assignment at Kadena Air Force Base on Okinawa, and uh, so he selected us to uh, to fly the the sixth airplane over. Although we were the el element leader actually of, of the flight uh, of the of Flight of four and, and flight of two, and we were in, in the flight of two, and so we we flew from uh, Nellis Air Force Base to uh, Hickam, and then from Hickam to uh, to Guam, and from Guam up to uh, supposed to go to Osan, but uh, one of the uh, airplanes had a problem, and and so they diverted him and. and uh, and I was told to uh, escort him into uh, Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa. And once we landed, we called the, uh, the commander of, of, the, of our element, asked if he wanted us to stay until that airplane got fixed or just come on up by ourselves. And he said, get on up here, we need you here. So we, we turned around and, and flew up from uh, Kadena up to Osaka. Well, the, the, the Pueblo mission was a very interesting one because our job would have been to go into North Korea to go after the SAMs if we had to go in there and fight with the North Koreans to recover the Pueblo or to prevent a further escalation of uh, relations with the North Koreans. But I remember one of our biggest concerns was we, the U.S., the U.S. Army, had, uh, I can't remember the name of the missiles, oh. The Hawk missiles that were looking north to get any of the North Korean MiGs that might be coming down to attack the South. We had a capability to enter North Korea and go after the Sands, but these Hawks looking north didn't know who we were, and their orders were to shoot first and ask questions later. So yeah. we felt that our biggest concern was not going up there and getting SAMs, but was coming back home safely and not getting shot down by the Hawks. So it was an interesting time up there. I think we've seen each other a couple times a year at different times, uh, depending on what we'll tied in with the, uh, the foundation that I'm working now. I get down to San Antonio a lot, and he lives within an hour of San Antonio, so whenever I'm down there, we get together. He comes down, or I go up to Fredericksburg, and we get together and have lunch or dinner and yeah. tell lies to each other and drink a few things. Yeah. But, but we remain, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's right. But we remain in touch all the time. We're on the phone once in a while, a lot of email goes back and forth. Well, I think it's a camaraderie that, that you develop. Uh, during the time that, that you served together, and it, it was very important to uh, maintain contact with each other. It's, it's, it's not like passing, uh, like in most cases where, where you join an outfit and you're there for, for a little while and you go somewhere else and do it. But as a weasel and as a, as a, uh, as a pair, and you're, you're, you're almost joined at the hip and you, you become very, very uh, uh, conscious of the fact that, that you, you were a, 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 a pair that depended on each other for survival. So it's very important to stay in contact. Uh, I have to echo that. It's, it's the camaraderie and the friendship that you develop. And, I, and I've said this before when I've talked to people in, in other venues. I don't think outside of the military, at least once you're in combat with people, that civilians 
can develop the kind of feeling toward each other and responsibility for or to each other as you do in combat situations. And we flew together for eight months in combat, and that's something that's a bond that you just uh, can't break. And the same with others that have done the same thing. This weasel reunion is good to see a hundred of our friends that we know did the same thing, faced the same enemies that we did, faced the same threats, and survived, which is the key. And of course, we remember those that don't survive. But it's the camaraderie, the bond, the friendship that's important to be able to renew as often as we can. I, mean, I like to tell people I, I kid Harry because uh, I like to say that he saved my butt 85 times. We flew 85 missions together. He got me up there and he got me back. We had an equal number of takeoffs and landings, and I thank him for that. And, and go ahead. Say so most of the landings were really good. They were excellent landings. <laughs> Well, I like to think that we led a, a legacy which your people here are carrying on. And I'm proud that we were early on in that and that Harry and I were able to set some of the basic ground rules or methods of operation. 